This video is sponsored by Aura. April 24th, 2010, Yazoo City, Mississippi. An apparent wall of rain miles wide is speeding towards town. The National Weather Service issues a rare tornado emergency as behind that wall of rain is a mile and a half wide tornado that is throwing trees like toothpicks and carving into farm fields. Southwest of the heart of town is 31-year-old Nikki Carpenter with her three boys in their mobile home. Tornado sirens in town cannot be heard in the southern outskirts of town. At the last minute, Nikki receives a phone call that alerts her to the oncoming danger. As she shelters her kids in the center of the mobile home, a low-frequency rumble would crescendo into a deafening roar. The wall of rain would overtake the south side of Yazoo City. They brace for impact. The night prior, forecasters at the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma were putting together strong warding for the day's forecast as conditions looked ripe for a tornado outbreak. Their eyes had been on this weather system for days now as computer models were in agreement that ingredients would be in place to support severe weather. A pronounced upper-level low would eject a shortwave trough across the southeastern United States. This system would draw in deep moisture across the region from the Gulf of Mexico and would already possess strong instability. Not much extra heating would be needed at the surface as the cap was already weakened by earlier storm activity. Storms will fire early, mature quickly, and race northeast. For all of these reasons, SPC forecasters issue a rare high risk for severe weather the following day, the first time a high risk is used in over a year. Storms would ultimately not need much time for daytime heating to pop off. A dominant supercell would mature rapidly over the southwestern Mississippi River Basin. At 10.09 local time, that supercell would spawn a tornado just south of Interstate 20, just to the west of the town of Tallulah, Louisiana. It would quickly widen and make its presence felt as it would flip a tractor trailer on I-20, injuring the driver. It would carve through farm fields, leaving cycloidal marks while crumpling high voltage transmission towers and shredding farmsteads. Before crossing the mighty Mississippi River, it would slam into the complex chemical plant, flipping tanker cars, damaging storage tanks, and collapsing a large crane. Once across the Mississippi River, the tornado would mill over an oxbow lake into the shoreside community of Eagle Bend, Mississippi. Several homes would lose roofs and a few more would be completely destroyed. East of US-61, it would enter the Delta National Forest, leaving a mile-wide scar that could be seen from space. Past the National Forest is the farmland-laden river basin of the Yazoo River, where the tornado would come into view for Reed Timmer's Team Dominator. As one of the few chase groups willing to chase Dixie Alley, the river basin would provide one of the clearest views possible in this region. It is clear to them that this tornado was not to be messed with. Sitting on Mississippi Highway 3, they watch as the tornado becomes increasingly wrapped in rain. They note that it is coming right for them, and more specifically, that it is coming for Yazoo City. Here in the 21st century, we are increasingly tied to the internet, and with that, our personal data as well. With hackers stealing customers' personal information from companies, to leaks on the dark web of billions of national public data records, including addresses, dates of birth, and social security numbers, it is more important than ever to be looking out for your personal information on the internet. And that is where today's sponsor, Aura, comes into play. Aura is a company that scans all corners of the internet for your personal information. So whether it be data brokers or the dark web, Aura is looking out for your personal information. Aura will automatically send out data opt-out requests to data brokers on your behalf when you sign up. They will also notify you when your information has been compromised on the dark web, giving you the heads up you need before any damage is done. If you are like me and value the protection of your personal data, 
then use the link in the description below or go to Aura.com slash June 1st to get a 14 day free trial of Aura's data protection suite. Big thanks again to Aura for sponsoring this video. And with that, let's dive back in. Team Dominator would take a southerly escape route on Mississippi Highway 3 to avoid the tornado, which was now well over a mile and a half wide. Staying just south of downtown, the wedge would run over Highway 3 and plow through the rural residencies that dotted the roadsides. On Judkins Road, the Carpenters' mobile home would be overtaken by the northeastern edge of the tornado. It would be picked up and thrown over 200 feet into the opposing tree line. Past the Carpenters' residence, it would drop into a valley that is occupied by US-49, topped out at a whopping width of 1.75 miles. This is where multiple industrial structures in the Hillcrest Baptist Church would take the brunt of the storm. The tornado achieves peak intensity in this part of town and would continue to power past Yazoo City, having left its mark. East of town, more intense tree damage would be observed, with severe debarking and whole acres of trees either uprooted or snapped over. In Yazoo County alone, four people were killed and 53 were critically injured. In Holmes County, the small villages of Ziegler'ville and Ebenezer would take direct hits with more mobile home casualties. Southwest of the town of Durant, the tornado would undergo re-intensification leveling brick homes as a result and bulldozing across Interstate 55 where multiple vehicles would be thrown off the road. It wouldn't be until Choctaw County where there would be another round of re-intensification, flattening a convenience store with six people sheltered inside and mowing over a neighborhood of mobile homes where five more people were killed. The tornado would finally begin to lose steam over the village of Chester and after being on the ground for nearly three hours, the tornado would finally rope out five miles north of Sturgis, Mississippi, leaving a 149-mile path of devastation behind it. While the Yazoo City tornado was certainly the standout tornado of the day, in total, 38 other tornadoes would make their way across the south on this high-risk day. Multiple long-tracked EF-3s and an EF-4 would make their presence felt later that evening in northern Alabama, as a low-level jet would supercharge existing supercells. Fortunately, none of the other tornadoes that day claimed any lives. Back in Yazoo City, emergency responders are pouring into the town. Many of the hardest-hit areas are cut off by downed trees, meaning neighbors are often the first to find victims. Team Dominator would be among the first to roll up into the devastation. They would quickly mobilize and use their Discovery Channel camera crew assets to lend aid to the residents of Yazoo City. Not far from where Team Dominator was lending a hand, first responders reached the final resting place of the Carpenter's home, 200 feet northwest of where it once stood. Each of the three young sons had extensive injuries, requiring a medevac to the University of Mississippi Medical Center. As for their mother, Nikki, she would succumb to her injuries, becoming one of the four killed in Yazoo City, as she sacrificed her life to shield her sons. In total, 10 lives were claimed by the Yazoo City tornado. Another 146 were critically injured. Unfortunately, the majority of the lives lost were associated with mobile homes. Beyond the human impacts, 283 homes and businesses were completely destroyed, with another 849 significantly damaged. National Weather Service surveyors assigned the Yazoo City tornado with an EF4 rating, with estimated peak winds of 170 miles per hour. Total damage estimates accrued to $364 million. The Yazoo City Tornado would end up being the deadliest of the 2010 tornado season. This would be the first 100 plus mile long violent tornado in the state of Mississippi since 1992. But the Yazoo City storm would be quickly lost to the shadow of history in a year's time 
as the super outbreak of 2011 would become the quintessential standard for Dixie Alley tornadoes. Nonetheless, it highlighted the growing danger of sheltering from tornadoes in mobile homes, which continues to plague the southeastern United States even in today's tornado outbreaks. So as always, stay safe out there when it comes to severe weather.